to see a brother who had lost his five daughters. And they mentioned that, you know, when he was telling the story about his eldest daughter, that she was very loving. And she was loved in the community. And every day how she would sleep is with her two arms around her younger two daughters, her sisters. And he said, when the bomb fell and we regained consciousness, we removed the rubble. And this is exactly how we found her. And the brothers who heard it began to cry. And the father who had lost five daughters stood up and he said, oh, he's consoling the brothers who are crying. The father who's lost his daughters. And he said, oh, brothers, have sabr, have sabr, for they are by Allah in Jannah. And then he had a daughter who was 16 days old when her sisters passed away. And he picked her up and he said, I swear by Allah, she is Allah's. And if Allah wants to take her, Allah can take her as well. Now, you don't find people like that anywhere else. These are people of Iman. If it was anybody else, they would have cut and run. You heard the story of Yusuf and his father Yaqub, that he lost his son and he cried so much that he went blind. The brother met a, a, a lady there, that her, child, her son had been in prison for 15 years. Never seen her son for 15 years. And she had cried so much that she had gone blind. You know, the brothers went to a, a, a sister whose husband had just passed away. Just months before that, she had six children, six yatims. And they went to give her money. And she refused to take the money. She said, up the road there is somebody else who is in more need than I am. If it was one of us, we would have said, yeah, let's keep it for a rainy day. And, and see, this is the thing. The slap in the face is ours. Because we have become desensitized. We see the suffering every day. You know, Iraq, Afghanistan, what can we do? Now we do our best and we leave the rest in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we do something. Because this is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he was a man who cared. He was a man who cared. He wouldn't allow the suffering of people who were oppressed to go on. Umar ibn al-Khattab wouldn't allow that. And these are people who, you know, whose sunnah that we follow. And therefore for us, we, we need to... Maybe we can't assist these people. You know, maybe we can't you know, physically assist them. But we can assist them with our wealth. We can assist them with our du'as. We can do what we can in this country. If the Jews can lobby, why can't we lobby? If the Jews can be motivated, what, you're just waiting for Jannah? Oh no, I'm going straight to Jannah. I don't have to do anything. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. You know, that La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah should be a source of motivation. It should, it should motivate you. To becoming, you know, that you are a believer. And that it is an uh, obligation. Look, look, the, the, when the Prophet said, Assist your brother. May he be the oppressor of the oppressed. And the Sahaba said, How do we assist? We can understand assisting the oppressed. But how do we assist the oppressor? And the Prophet وسلم, said that you stop him from his oppression. The ulama deduced from that that even an oppressor has a right over the believers. And what about the right that the oppressed have over the believers? So when it comes to our wealth, you know, we assist these people. Because this wealth that we have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet وسلم, said that he took a custom over this. He, he said, he took a custom, he narrated Imam Tamid in the jam, he narrated. He said, Tlaf, he said, he said, Tlaf, he said, he said, he said, three things I take an oath upon. I take an oath. Who takes an oath? The Prophet Sallallahu What? Ma naqasa malu abdin min sadaqa. If you spend in the path of Allah, Allah will not decrease your wealth. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi took an oath upon it. And therefore the wealth that we have, you know, is a mana from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the narration that there were three people that he wanted to test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to test from the Israelites before Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them an angel in the form of a human being. One was a leper, 
the second person was a person with no hair on his body. And the third person was a blind person. And this angel went to these three people. And first he went to the leper. And he said, what thing would you desire the most? And the leper said, the thing that I would desire the most is that Allah give me good skin. Because people repel me. People shun me. So he rubbed his hand over his body and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him you know, clear skin. Then he said, what is the most beloved thing that you would like wealth-wise? And he said, I would like a camel, which is pre a pre camel. So... The angel gave him a camel, which was pregnant, and then he made dua for it, that Allah Barakah. And it increased so much that a time came that he had an entire valley full of camels. Then the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did the same with the person who had no hair on his body. And he made a, he, Allah cured him, and then he asked him, what do you desire the most? And he said, I desire a cow. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him a pregnant cow. And the time came that the entire valley was full of cows. And then he went to the blind person. He said, what do you desire the most? He said, Allah restore my eyes. And he rubbed his hand over his eyes. Allah restored his eyes. And then he said, what do you desire the most? He said, a goat. And he made a dua. And a time came, uh, the dua for barakah, that he had an entire valley of goats. And then Allah wanted to test them upon the nikmah that Allah gave him. So he sent an angel again in the form of a human being, but this time in the form of a pauper. And he came to them. And he said, he came to the leper first. And he said, you know, I'm far away from my home. I have nothing. Only thing I can turn towards is you, Allah, and you. Please give me one of the camels that you have. And he said, al haquq kathira. He said, I have too many rights, too many mouths to fill, too many mortgages to give, you know, too many aspirations in life. As a prophet said, he said, kam hasaratin fi batunil maqabir. He said, and that's how many a desire lies in the depths of the grave. You know, you want this, you got a Mercedes, then you want an X5. That's going to wear his eye <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is the thing. It never finishes. It never never finishes. The aspirations never finish. But if we take the teaching of the Prophet sallallahu when he told Abu Dhar, he said, "Oh Abu Dhar, look at those who are beneath you, and do not look at those who are above you." Because if you look at those who are beneath you and you go to Gaza and you, and you see the suffering of the people in Gaza, then you realize how much Allah has given you. Allah. But if you look at those who are above you, then you always want some more. And you will never be able, you know, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, if man had two valleys of gold, he would aspire for the third. The only thing will satiate him is the dust in the grave. You always want more, it never finishes. And, it, and what happens, you want more and more, and you can't have that much, so you end up on Prozac. Because <laughs> the aspirations never finish. But Wallahi, if you see the people in Palestine, and other people who are suffering all over the world, then you realize how much Allah has given us. And the greatest thing that we can do upon this ni'mah that we have, you do shukr. And Allah said, in shakakun azidannakum. He said, if you do shukr, and shukr the best way, you know, like, you know, the Asian, they say shukr, their shukr is, they say shukr alhamdulillah, you know, thanks. That is it, the ultimate shukr. The ultimate shukr is that you give what Allah has given you to those who are more needy, need than you. That is the ultimate shukr. And this is why, you know, wallahi, we, we can never stop thanking people like Interpal who give us the ability, who give us the opportunity to spend in the path of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it reaches, you know, those who are in need in Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who revive our tradition. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us united in this dunya and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us in Jannah.